In this third part of our special series, INN Takes on the History Channel, we will speak to Dr. David Ray Griffin, who has written several books on this topic and is featured throughout the History Channel special, 9-11 Conspiracies, Fact or Fiction. A little later on, we will also speak to physicist Crockett Gravy, who has published an article in the August edition of the Journal of 9-11 Studies. But first, welcome to INN, Dr. Griffin. Thank you, Lenny. Glad to be with you. Dr. Griffin, what is your overall impression of the History Channel's piece? Well, it was uh, completely irresponsible. It was just a propaganda piece. Um, it was not objective journalism. It didn't even come close. What do you think they did that was really so terrible? Well, the main thing was the overall uh, shape of the show was to contrast uh, experts and conspiracy theorists. So those were two exclusive categories. So uh, they would quote members of the 9-11 Truth Movement. They would identify us as uh, conspiracy theorists. And then they would quote other people who, uh, by definition, were experts because the definition they were working with was anyone who accepts the official theory is an expert. Anyone who rejects it, no matter what their credentials, is a mere conspiracy theorist and, and not an expert. Were there certain facts that you saw in watching the film that were just plain wrong that they tried to use in their fact graphic that they kept putting up on the screen? There were a lot of those, but let me elaborate a little more on my point about the, their way of setting things up. Uh, let me give a couple examples. Um, one was they, they made uh, sure that they pointed out that uh, Jim Meggs and Davin Coburn were uh, co-authors uh, of a book uh, that Popular Mechanics had put out called uh, uh, Debunking 9-11 Myths. Um, normally, when you interview a guest, if the guest has written a book that's relevant to the topic, uh, that book will be mentioned. Well, I happen to have written a book called uh, Debunking 9-11 Debunking, an answer to popular mechanics and other defenders of the official conspiracy theory. One might have thought it would be relevant to inform the audience that I had written such a book. Furthermore, they quoted a lot, particularly at the end, the 9-11 Commission report as authoritative, and they would show that we were wrong by the fact that the 9-11 Commission report said something different. They failed to mention that I've written a whole book-long critique called 9-11 uh, the 9-11 Commission report, Omissions and Distortions. They, in fact, referred to, when they referred to books, they said uh, the 9-11 movement uh, has a bunch of uh, authors who have written uh, self-published uh, books. Uh, at the same time they were doing that, they were, they were scanning some books, and they happened to show one of my books, Christian Faith and the Truth Behind 9-11, which is published by Westminster John Knox. None of my five books about 9-11 are self-published. There are many other people, including some who were on the show, who published books that were not self-published. But that was their way of denigrating us, is to suggest it's just people on the Internet and people who can't get a book published by a regular press uh, that would believe that uh, the 9-11 uh, might have been an inside job. Would you say that the creators of the film tended to lump all the conspiracy theories together, tended to mix up those who come from a science background and are looking at hard evidence and others who are trying to piece together an explanation for what happened that day? Is that one of the techniques uh, that you would agree was used? Well, certainly. Uh, they, uh, in, their, in their effort to show that the experts were all on the other side, um, they... Uh, hardly quoted anything from the people on the 9-11 the Truth side who are recognized experts. Uh, Stephen Jones uh, barely got out two or three sentences, and I, I asked him uh, this morning how long he was interviewed. He said for an hour and 15 minutes. So here you have the major physicist of the movement. Uh, they could only squeak out two sentences from him, whereas they gave most of the time 
to uh, uh, Alex Jones and uh, Dylan Avery. Now, they, they both did well. Dylan did uh, very well. But nevertheless, Dylan is a 24-year-old kid. And it's much easier to paint him as someone who doesn't know what he's talking about than somebody like a Stephen Jones. They did the same thing with uh, Colonel Robert Bowman. Here you've got a guy who was uh, in charge of the Star Wars program uh, for several years. Um, he's a fighter pilot. He was an interceptor pilot. He knows the routine. He knows how interceptions are made. He knows how fast all this is going. Um, and uh, they quoted him. I, I would imagine they probably interviewed him for an hour or two, but they squeaked out uh, one or two sentences from him. In the section that, uh, that looked at the Shanksville crash, uh, Flight 93 going straight into the ground and then the debris field, did you see any factual errors in that section? Um, one of the points was uh, Susan uh, McElwain. They, they did quote.